Hi, welcome to another IGCSE physics video. In this video, we're looking at section 1.7, which is about center of mass. In this video, we will learn about the center of mass of objects. We will determine the center of mass of different objects. And we will also learn about the base of support, balancing and disbalancing of different objects. So what is the center of mass of an object? Well, the center of mass is an imaginary point in an object's mass where the whole mass of the object appears to be acting. So let's say that the object that we're talking about is a sphere, and that sphere has a radius of 2 centimeters. Then we know that from our intuition that the center of mass of the sphere would be at the center of the sphere. And we know that we can roll this sphere on some surface, and every time that the ball spins around its circumference, we know that the center of mass will stay at this point all along the line. So this also tells us that the center of mass of an object is also the center of gravity, as the object is in static equilibrium. Now let's say that you had a mug on some floor. From our intuition, we'd know that the center of mass would be around this point, because this is the center of the base of support of this mug. It would not be in this handle, as most of the mass is concentrated in the left side of this mug. So we can also say that the center of gravity would be at this point. Now let's talk about finding the center of mass for some objects. Let's start with some regular objects like a cube. So I know from my intuition that this cube has a lot of lines of symmetries, and I can draw them from the center like that. And we know that all of these lines intersect at this common point, which is the center of mass of this cube. And so we can also call it the center of gravity, and gravity will appear to pull it from the center of the cube. Another regular object could be a sphere. And we know that circles or spheres have infinitely many lines of symmetries which pass through the radius, as each point on the circumference is equidistant from this radius. And we see that the point of intersection is this center of the circle, or the sphere. And so the center of the mass and the center of gravity are at this point, and gravity pulls it from here. But what if you have an irregular object? For example, say you have a wooden plank which is cut like this, and we have sliced this piece apart. And let's say that all the edges of this object are different from each other. They're not the same length. So I don't know what the lines of symmetries of this object are. In this case, to find the line of symmetries of irregular objects, we use something that is called a plumb bob. And this bob here is filled with some heavy metal, like lead. So it has some mass inside of it. Now the way we figure out the lines of symmetries of an irregular object like this wooden plank is by using the plumb bob. And in order to do so you have to rotate this object in various angles and place a nail in different places. So let's say I rotated this object in this orientation and I placed a nail here. And I hung my plumb bob over here. Well, From this demonstration I can see that my plumb bob is facing towards the center of the earth. And this is direct, the direction of the center of the Earth. So this is the line of symmetry that we can see here. Now we also have to find the second line of symmetry so we can find an intersection point which lies along this line here. So this is my second orientation. And this time I've rotated this object in the leftwards direction. So this time let's place a nail at this point and hang the plumb bob from here. Well, if we hang it from here, we can see that the center of gravity is going to be in this direction. And here's our plumb bob. And now I can draw these two lines on this original diagram and see where those two lines intersect on this diagram, which is going to be our center of mass. So on this first orientation, I placed the nail at this point, and I rotated it like that, clockwise. And I saw that it passed through like that. So if we look at it in this direction, it passed like this. And in this diagram, I see that we rotate it in the leftwards direction, and we placed the nail at this point. And then when we place the plumb bob, the center of gravity pointed in this direction. And if we remap this diagram on this original diagram, it appears that it looks like this. So this is the point of intersection of the center of mass. And it appears that more of the mass is concentrated on this side of the object. So the center of gravity would point in this direction if we let this object stay on the ground level. Now let's talk about some scenarios of balancing and disbalancing in objects. Let's say that I have this irregular object, which is a table. And let's say that the center of mass is at this point. 
and the center of mass can lie outside of the actual mass of the body. So if we were to hang some plumb bobs at different locations, like at this location or this location, and we turn the orientation of the table in different directions to see where the plumb bob points towards the center of the earth, then we will be able to see what the lines of symmetry are. And they will look something like this along the corners. And so we can see that the center of mass points at this point, which is outside of the table. Now let's talk about the physics of this table's balance. We know that this table is balanced on some surface, like the floor, and it doesn't topple anywhere. And we know that this table is supported with these legs, and so the base of support would be in this circle. And we also know that the center of mass is at this point, which is also the center of gravity which is being pulled down by the earth. Now let's say that you were to lift this table from one edge upwards, so that one of the legs lifted off the ground. Well now since we have lifted the table from one edge, we can see that the base of support has shrunken. However, when we let go of the edge of the table, that table will return to its original position and will topple back down and return to equilibrium. This is because the center of gravity is still in the base of support, and so this will return to this image, where the base of support returns to the bigger one, and the center of mass points to the center of the base of support. But let's say that using the same table this time, with the same center of mass, we pick up the table from the edge once again, but we lift it at a higher magnitude so that the angle is greater compared to the ground. Well, this time things are different. The base of support starts from this corner of this leg and it extends to the perpendicular to this leg, so it stops at this point. But now I can see that the center of mass or the center of gravity is pointing in this direction and it's outside the base of support. So now there's a disbalance in the moments on the left side and the right side and now this table is going to topple in this direction instead of going back to its original position where it was in a balanced position. And by falling down on this side of this floor, it will gain a bigger base of support so that it's back in equilibrium on this side of the table. So what the first scenario tells us is that if you displace an object, it will only stabilize if the force caused by its weight or the center of the mass is within the base of support. And in this case, we saw that it was in the base of support, so the object came back to its original position where it was back in equilibrium. While in this scenario, we saw that if the displacement of the object is high enough, such that the center of mass or the center of gravity gets out of the base of support, then the object will reorientate itself so that it's in a new base of support and it's regained its equilibrium. Although the object could not return back to its original orientation, like in the previous scenario, and so to finalize, if the center of mass for this object is not in the base of support, then it will try to find a new balanced position so that the center of gravity or the center of mass passes through the base of support. And this is it for section 1.7. I hope you now understand the concepts of the center of mass and how to find the center of mass of irregular and regular objects and how the location of the center of mass and the size of the base of support can affect the balance of an object also leave a comment in the comment section and provide feedback so I can improve my videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.